This lesson deals with understanding call numbers and what do they all mean. So what are call numbers? Um, a call number is essentially an address for a book. It tells us exactly where a book is located within the library. So every book has a completely unique call number. Um, and call numbers can be found on the spine of the book. Okay, and when they're on the spine of the book, they're written top to bottom. Um, and in Millennium, uh, when you're actually doing a catalog search. And in that case, they're written left to right. So why would they be written differently in two different places? Why might they need to be stacked or written top to bottom on books? Okay, sometimes call numbers can be relatively lengthy. Um, and the spines of books are not necessarily always that wide, so they stack them in order to let them all fit. Um, Shelton State, like many academic libraries, uses the Library of Congress classification um, for its call numbers. So what is the Library of Congress classification system? It's a system that uses a combination of letters and numbers um, to arrange books by subjects. Um, and when you have a call number, and we have an example of a call number at the bottom of the screen, the first section represents the subject of the book. Okay, so in this case, PN4784.S4 represents the subject of this particular book. Um, the letter and the decimal section of the call number often represents the author's last name. Uh, so that C36 would represent our author. And then the last section is often the date of publication, so 2001. Um, and all of those things come together to form the unique identifier known as the call number. So how do you read call numbers, just saying them aloud? Um, to start with, the numbers following the letter are read as a whole number. So we have PN4784. Um, PN 4784 would come before PN 5245. Um, dot S4, or if there's additional numbers immediately after the whole number, treat them as a decimal. So PN 4784 um, point S4 or dot S4 would come between PN 4784 and PN 4785. Uh, the next part of the call number, uh, just go to the letter and then treat the number as a decimal, so C36. Um, and then the final number is included, it's not always, that's your year of publication, and it's just um, 2001. So this call number would be read PN 4784.S4C36 2001. Now, uh, the books are arranged on the shelves. Um, in order by each section. And you can see um, the chart here and kind of how it breaks down with each section. LA comes before LB, okay, but then you have 2327 coming before 2328. Dot B comes before dot C, dot 34 before dot 55, dot 55 before dot 554, dot 555 before dot 63 and then 1987 comes before 1991 um, and that's how they kind of follow along on the shelves. So why are call numbers important? Uh, they allow for the easy retrieval of books so if you happen to look up something in the catalog um, it's going to give you the call number and if you don't know exactly where to go for it a librarian does. Um, also, since books are classified by subject as opposed to by author, uh, you can often find several helpful books on the same shelf or nearby. If you're looking for poetry um, or war poetry during World War II and you're in that section of the stacks, you might be able to look around the book for the call number that you've actually pulled and find books that are similar. Um, so let's look at the Library of Congress classification table. real quickly um, and a lot of times you can look at this and see which areas actually um, are areas of your interest or areas of your field. Uh, for example one of my areas was P, language and literature, uh, but if you're going into some type of history field uh, you might see yourself in C through F uh, depending on the type of history. If you're doing nursing uh, you might find yourself in the R's 
more often uh, than not if you're doing education uh, you'll find yourself in the L's so kind of just knowing the general classification letter for the Library of Congress classification system guarantees that no matter what library you actually go into um, academic library across the country that you can find uh, books in your topic now sometimes call numbers have prefixes um, and when the call numbers look like the previous examples, uh, the PN 4784 example, uh, the book is shelved in the stacks of Brooks Cork. Okay, so that's near the rear of the library. However, some call numbers can be preceded by a location prefix indicating where in the library it can be found. Um, and this is specific to Brooks Cork Library in that if it's a reference book, um, it will be indicated by an REF before the call number. Um, so if we look at our example, we have REF, that stands for reference, and then we have AG 243.G87-1992. That lets us know that that is actually a reference book that's going to be in the AG section. Um, now the only thing that is arranged by the Library of Congress classification system at Brooks Court are the books, both circulating and reference. Uh, for audiovisual materials, Library of Congress call numbers are not used. Um, it's a different type of system. The format code and shelf number are used. That's not something you have to concern yourself with because um, audiovisual materials uh, are requested at the audiovisuals desk or the reserve desk and brought to you by a librarian. Uh, the periodicals at Brooks Cork, um, we don't use Library of Congress call numbers. Uh, instead, we arrange them alphabetically by title. Uh, you can find current issues on the current periodical shelves, uh, which are when you walk into the library, they are the shelves that are to the, your right, um, all the way back. And then there's past issues up to about a year ago, year and a half ago, in the periodicals room, which is over in the back left-hand side of the library. Uh, the vertical file materials or the pamphlets, um, call numbers again, not used. Um, the call number will often say in file followed by the subject title of the file um, and these materials are kept at the front of the library in the uh, spinning racks. <laughs>